Listen up. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, Rap Radar Podcast, Elliot Wilson. It's B-Dot. B-Dot, what's up, baby? Feeling great. You got to shout out to good folks at HelloFresh. Yo, and for our people that don't speak English, hola fresco, okay? <laughs> Hello Fresh is the best thing that's ever happened tell, to wait, me, man. Before you I'm talk about you. it, because you've been telling me about this thing, man. Let me know. Let me tell the people what it's about, man. Hello Fresh is this meal kit delivery service that makes cooking fun, easy, and convenient. Yes. You create your own recipes, be that step by step instructions designed to take around thirty minutes for everyone from novices, that's mm. me, to seasoned home cooks to get to get their food right, right? And Absolutely. You, you've actually experienced this. Yes, man. Let, listen, I can't cook a hot pocket, okay? So Hello Fresh. <laughs> For people like me, it's easy, convenient. They sent a box to you, right? It's coming dry ice, and I like chicken, so I got the chicken plant. Okay. So, you know, I, everything is there for you. You know, like you go to uh, the supermarket, you want to pick up certain ingredients, mm-hmm. and you might forget something. Yep. Everything is in the box. They thought of it. They thought of it. They're already 10 steps ahead of you, right? So, okay. But I, does I, it taste good, b It tastes delicious. <laughs> in, in fact, I was on Instagram, and I was kind of documenting my journey of, you know, cooking, and it looks just like the picture. You know, the, the recipe <laughs> picture. I'm telling you, I'm swearing by Hello Fresh, man. Also, it's healthy, right? Because you was trying to get right all summer, talking about staying in better shape, yeah. cutting down the drinking, all that stuff. Yeah, I'm fake healthy. So Hello Fresh <laughs> is right up my alley. You know what I mean? But I'm, I'm telling you, people, please go get Hello Fresh. Stop spending money at the restaurant. Go no to McDonald's? these guys. Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. No fast food? Get you a Mick Hello Fresh meal, man. There you go. And you got to tell them Rap Radar sent you, man. If you give them the promo code Rap Radar, man, you get $35 off your first week of deliverables. It's worth it. Trust 35 me. 35 big ones. It's, it's a meal right there. Right? People hit me on Instagram like, yo, what is that? I was like, yo, Hello Fresh, man. Get with it. Make sure you join the new movement, man. Go to HelloFresh.com. That's HelloFresh.com. Hit the code Rap Radar, R A P R A D A R. You get $35 off, baby. Absolutely. Hello Fresh. Speaking of fresh, man, these these fresh MCs is very rare. Females on this show is very rare. We got both things covered today. We got Rhapsody here, yeah. man. What's up, exciting. man? I finally made it to my favorite podcast. Finally, oh. because your fans <laughs> is honest, man. I saw you live yesterday, last night. You had a great uh, show, a little title event, you know, because you got the new project we want to talk about, and your fans. I was, I was literally about to leave, and one of your fans was like, yo, Look at me all serious. You want to get on the podcast, though, right? <laughs> I was like, my man, it's coming. It's coming, my G. He, why he approach you like that? No, Yo, he's got a little shit for a second. I'm like, you in my city, buddy. What are we doing? Knife Wonder sent him. <laughs> I didn't see that. Okay. Nah, but it feels like it's time rap because this project Crown. I was listening. I mean, we haven't. I've been. Make, I mean, look at all these notes I made. This is I've been listening oh, wow. to the record since it just dropped yesterday. But it's yeah. a lot to digest, and it's my it's my favorite Rhapsody project. I'm not just saying it. Everyone's That's latest is their greatest, but this is the one <laughs> I agree. to me. I Thank definitely you. agree. Yeah, I, I definitely would agree. Like, it's a whole lot of growth. Like, ever since I did Complexion, man, I just turned Ooh. a corner and, you know, I just found a whole new lane and pocket. So That's interesting. Do you think the there. success of that Kendrick collaboration, everybody uh, knows, the success made you even stronger? Yeah, I, I want not all, to, not all the way success, but, you know, just even before it even came out, like, the space of mind, frame of mind I was in, you know, I just I just turned a corner mm. around that time. Um, and, you know, I got in the studio, we've been working with, on the album. <clears throat> and with this one, it's just like, I'm gonna experiment, experiment. Mm. you know, to Pimple Butterfly when it came out, it inspired me so much. It's just like, yo, mm. you could do a lot and play with your voice and mm-hmm. melodies. So it's like, man, just go in here and we've been working on the album two years and just experiment. And that's probably the best thing I could have done. Like. Mm. That's where I think that's where a majority of the growth came from. And you mentioned on the on the new project, Mad. You said like people treated you funny after the Kendrick <laughs> uh, appearance. <laughs> What's that about? New phone number <laughs> alert. <laughs> it's no new. I mean, <laughs> not to get too deep in it, but um, oh, we want to get deep. It's a podcast, yeah, right? Don't you want? <laughs> nah, 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 nah. Some things, you know, you can't play all your cards. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, you, you you meet people out, you see them out, and they just look at you a little different. Mm. Um, you know they don't answer the text the same you know things change yeah um so you know i don't i never knew what it was but people around me be like yo they scared of you or <laughs> but it's know, usually the other way around they had that position right but like it be? i'm i don't know man i don't know <laughs> like i'm trying to figure out what it is but you know it's all good and, and the same i got a lot of love so it's a lot more love than that so I'm but did you feel mad. like it was going to be this kind of life-changing moment because obviously you had worked with kendrick before i mean yeah you know, very respect for each other already I'm mm-hmm. sure when he brought you in, you know, you work on a record, you don't know if that's going to make the final cut. Like, when did it finally right. click with you that you was going to be 
part of something special outside of yourself. When they sent them papers to sign, I'm like, like, oh, it's for real. There's no take back now. But it's crazy. He first reached out a year and a half, Mm. like two days after he dropped the control verse was the first time he reached out. Mm. He was in South Africa and he hit knife. They were talking about the control verse initially. And he was like, yo, I got this idea, this concept. I want Rhapsody on the next album. So I'm like, word, and a, a year and a half goes by. I haven't heard from him, seen mm-hmm. him. Like, it was nothing. And so I'm like, well, I don't think I'm going to be on it no more, which is cool, though, because I'm just, I'm a fan, too, so I'm mm-hmm. waiting for the music. And I was stuck at the airport one day, and it was just like that, out the blue. Like, Knife, knife hit me. He was like, Dave just hit me, and, and Kendrick about to sing you some music. He wants you to put some voice on it. Mm. And, you know, he sent the record, like, two or three days later. We talked on the phone real briefly. I did my I did my verse like I ain't even hear the whole song like mm-hmm. I ain't know what he rapped about the beat was different like right. he told me the concept and I was like all right like now you just can't overthink it you just gotta do you because that's what he hit you for right yeah did that um, what made it click for you like how did you approach your verse approach your verse he he called me he was like the name of the the track is complexion and he said I want to do something for us he was like you know everybody's beautiful but like you know with us like it was like that and i was like I, you know i was like man i got it like you ain't got to explain it like i know about the colorism and i had just finished watching a documentary about this probably like two weeks prior to this mm. you know i grew up with you know <clears throat> those issues right. of my own yeah. so you know i just wanted it to be me like i'm very lyrical i like to be witty but i told myself like you can't be too witty where people don't get it because people and breaking down lyrics is not like it was when I grew up Mm. you know Reasonable Doubt came out now like people have a hard time deciphering that because everything is so easy like (laughs) you know so um you know I just try to walk that line and find that balance and you know that's that's what it was. Was it similar with uh, Anderson Pack? Because you also on his album Malibu, which yeah. is one of my favorites this year on the that track was, without you. That was different. Oh, Kendrick yeah? was real top secret, um, but I get it. Like as the anticipation for his album, like mm. you don't want no leaks on that. Anderson Anderson came. We did that. He came to Raleigh, and afterwards, this is our first time meeting. He came mm-hmm. to the studio, and we did uh, we did without you that night. We did ooh we that night. This okay. Is probably like so you're the, on the new crime. Yeah, it was yeah. just probably a year over a year ago. Uh, he did the season that night. And we did like two more um, that are just in the can, and that was just like we was just in a in a vibe. Mm. We, like it was just like we just in here working. It was for nothing in particular. Yeah. So ninth and crisis would beat after beat, and Anderson works so fast. Mm. Like it's crazy. He don't write anything down. Like he just catch the vibe. He'll get a hook, he'll walk with it, and then he'll go in and record it. And he'll come back, listen to it, he'll do the verse. He'll be like, rap, you want to put something on it, put something on it. And <laughs> I'll write my part. And that's how we yeah. did. We did like four joints that, that night. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, I think I saw something he was saying that was based off his real relationship with his with his woman. And then you kind of yeah, tapped into the yep. vibe of it right away and, <laughs> right. and jumped right. on it and approached just, the record that way. Right, I just tried to play off what he was saying, but from a female perspective. Like, nah, don't don't try to come at us like that. We're going to tell you about how the guys do. Right. Like, there's always another side. So we just got in there and really had fun that night. And, you know, I that, that also helped in my growth, like working with different artists, like being in the studio with them yeah. and watching how they work. Like, I always try to grab something from that. I did it with Mr. Cheeks. I did it with Anderson. I did it with Kendrick, um, the first song we did together. So, you know, that always helps in my growth, like, yeah. Watching somebody else's process is like, oh, that's dope. Like, how can I take that but make it my own too? I think that's interesting because right. we see studio shots here. We see you with like Knife Wonder. We see you with Terrace Martin. Yeah. And like, t- but you're you're the female artist and you're the one in charge. I mean, these are your records. So I always wonder like, what's really your approach to song making? Like, what's your sessions like? What's your my approach sessions, to making man? My sessions. I mean, it's nothing crazy. Like, I work with Knife, we, we've known each other so long now, and we, we like family, like our chemistry is just, it clicks, cause yeah. we, mm. we both real passionate about the culture, so it's real easy, like, usually he or Crisis or Eric G or whoever in the Soul Council, um, they're in the studio and it's just making beats, and I'm going from room to room, and it's just like, let me, can I get that? Like, <laughs> they call me the beat hoarder, right. cause I hoard the beats, like I'll get 20 beats, and they'll be like, you don't, you don't write to them, but like, but one day I will. Like, oh, you just don't want them to go with nobody else. Right. Like, you know. I got it. It's going to be one day. It's going to catch the <laughs> time and is everything. Right. But, um, you know. Are you I, looking for a particular thing or you just kind of know right away if a, if a beat man, is calling you? 
for one, it's hard because they so dope. Like, I like everything. Yeah. Like, it's really, really hard. But sometimes I, I like things. I'm like, I love that, but it's not me. I'll be like, yo, that sound like Crit. Or that sound like Kendrick. You should mm. send that to Kendrick. Yeah. Or, you know, that that sounds like GQ. This sounds like Anderson. Send that. Let me see yeah. what you think. Um, so I, I don't get too greedy. Like, I don't mind sharing. But anything that sounds like it could be you. Yeah, you I'm, I'm taking that <laughs> wow. early. I'm taking that. This could so, be me. Right. So, like, sometimes a sample says is whatever the sample is, and I pull off, like, what's the sample saying? Like, I did that a lot on Crown, like, with Mad yeah. and through with him. Like, mm-hmm. I'll build around right. what the sample saying and tell him, make a story. And then sometimes, like, Ninth will have a concept for a song, whether it's off of, like, something we talked about that day, you know, whether it was, like, you know, whatever's going in the world, some conversation he had with his student, he was like, yo, like, this this happened today, like, we should make a song about it. It's like, mm-hmm. all right. Um, and, you know, sometimes, like, it'll just be like, I'll have something to talk about, but I can't find a beat that fits the mm-hmm. emotion of it. Mm-hmm. So I just go to YouTube and find, like, my favorite instrumental, and Ninth will make a beat and come put it oh, under wow. it. So we experiment all different ways with the studio. Like, so it's not one set way. Nah, it's not some one set way. It's like, however, we get it, we get it. Like, there are a lot of songs on Crown, like there are like four or five versions to them. We have four or wow. five different beats. So I do a song, we might play with different beats just to see like what energy we want. Mm. And you know, no, you so also got a lot of beat switch ups on the record yeah. too. Right? Yeah, that's right. what I know. Like, what was the concept going in for 2 a.m.? Because I think that's like probably the best record on Crown. And oh, Ab Soul just kills it. You he know, always as well. kills it, man. <laughs> and that was like, yeah, how'd, you get him, re- how'd you get him hyped up like that? You get so low to get. I, yeah. Actually, I've done records together. Before. Yeah, this was our third record right. together too. Actually, that song, his verse, he sent me that verse for a mixtape he was working on, mm. and I sent him in a verse. And for whatever reason, the mixtape didn't come out. So I've had that verse maybe two years, oh, wow. not a little bit more. So it was just like, let me take this and put it on another beat and make some new verses around it. Mm-hmm. Um, and we just found something that fit, sent it to him. He was like, go with it, and that's how it was. Um, that was the first part, and then the the second part, where the beat switches for the second time. Yeah, that was a song that we had made for the album, um, but it didn't make the album. But I, I liked the, that second verse that we used so much. Like mm-hmm. I was like, man, I got pipes it. like Whitney or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's the one people been quoting all day? I see error in your ways. Ain't no future with it. Yeah, I, mean, that I see error in your ways. I was like, I gotta there let that no go. Ain't no future in it. So uh, we attach that to it, and um, then there was another song, the last, the last switch up where I started the verse. It's the Maxwell flip ninth. Right. I, yeah. I started the verse with two a.m. So Guru was mixing, and he was like, "Yo, it just makes sense because you start the verse." 2 a.m. to put it on this song because mm. me and Ab's song was called 2 a.m. Right. So that's how we did it. And we wanted it to keep it under 10 tracks. So we was like, the way around that is to put songs at the end of other right. songs. So <laughs> <laughs> it's more than 10 tracks, but it's 10 sneaky. tracks. You but sneaky it's, rap. <laughs> but it's an easy listen, though, at 10 right. tracks. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. We didn't want to give too much. It's like the appetizer before the album. Right. So. So she's implying that she's sitting on even more heat. She keeps telling us, like, this is as much as we're enjoying this. Oh, that oh, Jigga man's oh. got lit the fire underneath you. <laughs> <laughs> man, he always lit the like the fire, man. Like, that's the dude. Like, he inspired me so much. Mm-hmm. Like, reasonable doubt and right. playing with words and painting pictures. Like, that's where I get it from. Every time you drop a verse, it's just like. I ain't gonna never catch up with him. Right. <laughs> yeah, so it's just a self-contained move with, with Jamla. What made you guys think Rock Nation was the right move? Like, how did the whole thing really come about to merge Man, with them? Um, I I think I always told Knife since day one, like, if we went to any label, I wanted to do something with Jay. You know, just outside of being a fan, like, just how he started, you know, when he when he came up, he would go to label, label, nobody would sign him. I don't think, you know, they got him or the, the lyricism or whatever. Yeah. So he, he did his own thing. He was um, forced to, yeah. yeah right. he, he, Dame, and Kareem, like, they did their own thing. So, like, just that history, you know, that felt like what Jamla was for me. And I was like, if anything, I know they get it. Um, you know, and I met Jay four times. They say, you know, <laughs> never meet your heroes. But with him, like, you know how laid back he is. Yeah, He's right. a cool dude. Yeah. Like, always shown love and and knife has known shaka forever shaka and you know Pilgrim, yeah mm-hmm. he told me like you know just how how good and down to earth she is so it just felt like and guru was a part of that so guru was on jamla but guru you know he's yeah. rock all mm-hmm. day so yep. it, it just felt like a natural marriage and fit like it was easy um you know i would had meetings with a few labels um but we waited like it just never felt right we waited and then 
probably two weeks before the Grammy, two weeks after the Grammys, they reached out with an email. We were like, there it is. Mm. And we just knew, like, we got to make this one work. Like, it's, this guy, it has to go through. So they reached out, like, in February, and paperwork was done in July. Wow. Right. So what, what's yeah. that process been like? I saw Chaka was repping last night. You guys yeah. you put up on your IG. Like, she's <laughs> she's definitely, inv- you said she got That's bars. Wrong. She said Chaka got yeah. some Chaka bars. Chaka got bars. Y'all don't even know. <laughs> You gonna have to get on the podcast. We try. We've been bars. trying, rap. We've been trying. I'm putting you out there, Shaka. <laughs> but even, but even at the, uh, you made the announcement at what was it, the Brooklyn Hip Hop Fest. Fest. Everyone yeah. thought Jay Electronica, you know, gave you the chain. And <laughs> <laughs> like, that was so, so random. Where's the That's chain, my dude? Like, man, when he put it on, I was, I was scared to put it on because it's you know five percent. I ain't five percent, but I'm like, I ain't about to tell him no, neither. Like. <laughs> nah, I appreciate that. Like, I'm a rocker, but as soon as I got off that stage, I was like, man, he gets chained back. He's like, I'll give you, give I don't want back, no problems. Back, I don't want back, no back. problems. <laughs> Chodic is crazy. Much respect to the five percent nation. <laughs> so, but nah, it's, it's it's been dope, man. We signed those papers, and he was like, man, a perfect perfect announcement would be Brooklyn Hip Hop right, Fest. Yeah. And so, you know, it's, it's by the Brooklyn b- Bridge. It's in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. So that's how we want to. So how do you think they've already helped your career? How do you, how much help do you think they've already Man, helped provide? Just, just the name Rock Nation itself <laughs> is right. going to give you some legs. You know, that, that brand is just like a Nike stamp, like yeah. a Jordan uh, logo. Like that itself, to attach a name to that means it opens doors by itself. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, they're really gonna start with the album. Um, <clears throat> they've been really helping, like, with press on this Crown Run, um, the Sennheiser event last night. That mm-hmm. you know, just put me in front of all those you know, new faces, like, and introduced me as a new artist, a title connect. Um, so, you know, that's the biggest thing: uh, visibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and that I think that was the thing what Jamla was lacking the most. Like, you know, so we could self-contained. Do, yeah, yeah. we so self-contained, but we couldn't get as much visibility as we want and that's where they really help mm. you know us on that end so but you seems like everyone's listening they got that barack obama guy is a fan of yours man bruh like <laughs> i did not see that one coming at all like i don't think as an artist you ever think you know it's gonna reach that level but we've never had a president that cool either that right. was yeah. that's part of the culture like he's a he's a hip-hopper to the core like his right. musical knowledge is crazy. And you went to the White House twice this year, correct? Four She's been times. there 87 times. <laughs> wow. Come on. I can't keep track of how many times. It's right, nuts. Let's break it all down. Why are you like the president's favorite rapper? Why are you like the White House I queen? I don't know if I'm his favorite. I think Kendrick and Chance got that one. <laughs> but I'm in the iPod. You're top five. You're top five. <laughs> I'm top five. Man, like. How did it's like a real, real relationship? Like, how did it, how did it yeah, develop? It's, it's, man, I, I would have to say it had to be just being on to Pimper Butterfly. Mm. Like, I think that was the introduction. It had to be. Yeah. Like, you know, as much as I know he loves the album and for me to be a part of it. Um, but it, you know, I haven't had a chance to like really sit and talk to him like, yo, how did how did you get on yeah, to yeah. the music? <laughs> this is just my guess. But um, he ori- they originally knit, uh, reached out because uh, they had a meeting with a group of artists around April. Um, it was a secret meeting at first where we talked about My Brother's Keeper and Criminal oh, Justice. Yeah. That's what Rick Ross's thing went off yeah. and all right. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I, I'm, I, was, I ain't the one that told it, but. <laughs> yeah, you didn't tell it, you didn't tell <laughs> But yeah, but it was a real power for me and like, yeah. to have all these, like all these different artists in this room. Like you got George Washington, we all black, we all hip hop, right. and you got this black president. Everybody's dressed up except J. Cole. <laughs> yeah, Cole didn't care. Cole doing his own thing. Cole always gonna be himself. I ain't even mad at it. Right. <laughs> but um it was But it was just, a serious meeting. It was a serious meeting, yeah. like serious and just talking about how we can use our influence, you know, to influence others, you know, to be mentors and, and just really send a message and, you know, keep going and progressing in the right way so I thought it was dope like for him to come up with that idea mm. it's never been done before yeah. um, and you know it's it's been really good like I've ever since that meeting like you know I have a great relationship with Alicia Keys now uh, me and Buster you know we've always been dope we even closer common chance um, so it, that was a crazy dope experience and it's great to be involved in those things like yeah. you know j- just for him to start a program like that like I see how dope it and meaningful it is like I'm really into it and passionate about it now mm. so that was the, why I put out the crown video yesterday like I really wanted to push that forward yeah. um, so you know that was the first time and the second time I went to the White House I performed for uh, 
it was a jazz fest. Mm-hmm. And that was probably one of the most nerve wracking moments of my life. Like, why so? Be, I think one, like, you performing in front of the president and the first lady wow. for one, and two, like, you're on a stage with jazz legends, mm-hmm. like, legends. So it was just like, oh boy, I'm, I hope I don't throw up. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like Wait, I, who was that? Terrace was involved too, or yeah, who was ta- I got that through t- uh, yeah. Terrace and Herbie Hancock. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they do um, a lot of stuff together. Yeah, yeah they they reached out. Uh, Terrace told me he was like, you know, I told Herbie like, man, you know, we can get anybody, but let's introduce somebody new. Let's bring Rhapsody. Mm. He was like, Herbie, like, yeah, 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 I'm cool. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> man, Herbie, like, that's crazy. So to be on the stage with Herbie Hancock, crazy. you know, Robert Glasses, Terrace, Terrace Martin, and then the president is sitting in <laughs> front right of you, there. like, wow. no pressure, was, be that, no right, pressure, right? No pressure. Like I told people, like. <laughs> I have this internal struggle, <laughs> like the but the bad angel is like you gonna get up there and fuck up, you know this right? And then <laughs> mm-hmm. it's just like nah, nah, I don't listen. But I mean, it turned out to be really dope experience. Yeah. So and That's then there was cool. some kind of Aretha Franklin tribute or something yeah. you did after that. <laughs> it so our our part <laughs> of the jazz fest was a Prince tribute. Okay. So. That's another thing, like you parted a Prince tribute, mm, like that's wow. dope. And Aretha comes on at the end and she sings Purple Rain. Wow. So yeah, we, we we had to rehearse without her, so we had to guess like what she was gonna do, cause nobody knew, like we just gonna guess. But I mean, she came out and she did Aretha. So, and then she, you know, she gave mad shout outs. Aretha, she hip hop too, but she gave mad shout outs at the end of that joint. <laughs> like Aretha no. said, I wanna shout out my sister. <laughs> I want to shout out my cousin. I want to shout out you. Like it was, it was mad funny. It was a moment, but it was good energy. So that's dope. What does it mean to you? Because on, on the record, like hard to choose. You talk about Nas is telling you, God, you're killing it. And mm-hmm. I know you grew up, you know, being a Nas fan. So yeah. like, what does his endorsement mean for you? Man, that that was big. I I sat down with Nas. Who was it last year at Soundset? That was the first time I met him. Mm. And um. We were back in the trailers kicking it, and you know, he was like, oh, okay. Um, I think I had Beauty and the Beast out of time, so I let him hear something. He was like, whoo, you know what I'm saying? Mm. He asked where I, fr- where I was from, and I was surprised that he knew because where I'm from is so small. But um, I think he has family mm. in North Carolina. So right. to have like, to have him give me that nod, um, you know, and we had meetings with Mass Appeal too. Right. Um, but you know, that's, man, these are people I grew up looking up to, so right. you know, to have them give you the nod when you know they know the music, like they know what talent is, like that's just motivation. Yeah. Right. Speaking of motivation, you mentioned that video, video for Crown that you just mm-hmm. put out. It's very powerful. Like for people hadn't seen it, explain what your approach was with that video and what you were trying Man, to accomplish. Um, I, I just wanted to really, one, show that there are black fathers out there too. Um, Cause I think, you know, that's that's something that is is a stereotype that in the black community, black fathers aren't there, but there are a lot of great black fathers. Mm-hmm. There are some single parent homes where you know the mother's the head of the house, but there are a lot of good black fathers. So I wanted to push that home and have a lot of you know men with their kids, but you know also just to promote mentoring. And I wanted to go back home and do it, you know, just to show my hometown some love. So I just wanted to be inspirational and, and just for people to look at and be like yo, this is something positive. Like, this is inspiring. Like, I, I can be a graduate and I can go do something. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't have to be a product of my surroundings, whatever that is. So I mm-hmm. just really wanted to push that home and make it inspiring. Um, and just, just show that, like, we really got to invest in the kids. Like, and especially as artists that we have a voice, like, we got to take that Tupac approach. Like, we can make records, party records, and have fun records. But we also got to balance that with a message, too. And I think Pac did that, yeah. you know. The, one of the best to do that so you know I just wanted to do my part is with that is that why you wore that pop shirt to the Grammy she had like the yeah. she had the fly Hillary pants I mean, suit going on and then she had red. the pop shirt on <laughs> yeah I keep it hip hop <laughs> and I was celebrating to Pimp a Butterfly that was why I was there and I okay. know how much you pop go. you know I was like yo it's a pop moment and you know I wore that t- t-shirt and um that why am I drawing a blank I'm What's drawing okay? a blank What's but okay? uh <laughs> Afini, Afini reached yeah. out. Oh, oh wow. wow! Right, so I mean, I hate I didn't get to meet her before she passed, but she she reached out. Oh, around now, that time, yeah, yeah, she saw me on the red carpet with oh, the wow. shirt on. She reached out after the yeah, Grammys. Yeah, she was like, you know, thank you for keeping his name going. I was like, whoa, yo, that's that's cra- that's, that's crazy. Like, 
almost teared up a little bit on that one. <laughs> <So> <laughs> that was a moment too. But back to Crown, speaking of power, you also have the spoken word part. Like, what made you add that spoken word piece and like something like that when you write poetry like that? Is that something mm. you try to lay a beat to or you just approach it differently? Man, I start, before I started rhyming, like I got into rhyming, I used to write spoken word mm. and I hadn't done it in so long. So mm. I wanted to go back to it. And two, because, you know, I wanted to re- people to really hear what I was saying. So I was like, I don't want to do a beat on it. Like, I just wanted to be, like, me talking to you, mm. you know. And, and it's like, you know, I'm in your ear right now. I w- really want you to hear what I'm saying. So I just wanted to take it back to, like, my natural foundation of how I progress into music and mm. just bring that back because, you know, I I, I used to watch uh, that poetry jam all the time with Mos and, and Russ, and that's what inspired me. Like, mm. yeah, so I just wanted to take it back to that. So you hadn't really touched foundation. on it musically since you since you took off mm. rap-wise? Yeah, mm. nah, I hadn't really done spoken word like that in a minute. So, you know, this is probably the first time in years mm. that I did that. That's dope. And that's that's part of my name. Like, poetry spoken with great emotion. So it's like, let me go back <laughs> to that. <laughs> Does your mama know how to pronounce your name now? No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, she said it's so funny rap rap a ditty or something you mention your mom a lot yeah, yeah music, she, your she's my biggest fan yeah. Margaret's biggest daughter fan. Margaret's daughter there you go yep, Margaret and my mom she'll hit me at 6 in the morning like she be she's on music more than I am she be like yo you heard this new song by such and such I be like nah wow. I don't know who that is like yeah, I like that song. I feel like it's six in the morning though. <laughs> <laughs> like this is what we doing? Or she she always give me advice. She's like, you know what? You need a beat like Heavy D. And I'm like, what do you know about Heavy D? I don't remember you ever listening to Heavy D when I was growing up. Like, That's funny. who are you right now? You know, she'd be like, I love Common. I'm like, yo, this is like, you are really blowing my mind right now. All I remember is Tina Turner and Patti LaBelle. Like, when did you become yeah. hip hop? So like, that's why you named the record Tina Turner for your moms? Nah, I just oh. I just got in a booth and that's what came oh, out. Okay, yeah. I was like, let me flip this. Flip the I, designer thing. Yeah, right. yeah, Talk about yeah. that, your approach. So you're paying attention too to what's going on, obviously. Yeah, yeah, I always, <laughs> I always keep it ear to the street. Um, you know, I thought it was dope what designer did, uh, the freestyle. Like, a lot of people were like, what is that? But I was like, yo, that melody is crazy. Yeah. Like, you put the right beat to it. The right beat, and you, yeah. you know, you got a jam, like, night for the beat to it. We were in the studio spazzing. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, it's just it's just always been in my head. So I got in the booth, and I was like, yo, Tina, Tina, Tina. I wanted to flip it. I'm like, I'm going to make it a female mm. version. So That's how it came about. Yeah. But another person that you, I feel like it's been a reoccurring theme throughout your music is uh, your sister. Like, it yeah. seems like, is she, like, older than you, or, or she's an older sister or a younger sister? Uh, I got, I have three sisters. Oh, yeah, actually. okay. Because it seems like the one that, I don't know which one you talk about in particular, but she says, like, you know, on, uh, what's the record? Nothing, the song about nothing. Song about nothing. Well, she's like, you want you to get a job. And <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She hit me, she's like, why you put that in there? <laughs> she like that. Um, nah, I, I stayed with my sister. Uh, we were close, and I was living with her, and this was, like, early, like, really, really broke rapper stage. <laughs> like, really broke. So I wasn't, she was charging me a rent a little bit, but she was charging me rent, and I really wasn't paying it on time mm-hmm. like that. Um, so she was like, yo, you need to get a job. Like, you need to grow up, like, do music on the side. And I'm mm-hmm. like, but she don't understand. Like, I got to put this first. I got to put my all in. And she, you know, we parted ways on living situations, but mm. I told her, I was like, it's cool. It made me a better person. So, you know, I, that's just part of my story. Like, yeah. she kicked me out. I lived in the studio for like two months because I didn't want to drive right. like an hour and a half from the studio back home. So I would pack a suitcase and just call friends and go take showers every day and just sleep on sleep on the couch and we might have bean bags at a time, yeah. curl up on a bean bag and just sleep. Just so like in the middle of the night, like, It'd be two in the morning, and an idea hit me, and I just wanted to be there and be able to get in the booth mm-hmm. and just lay it out. So, yeah. is this the same one from on my song? You said it was worried about your income. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why do you think hip hop was your path? Like I was looking at messing around on YouTube and like the old thing, and see you and like Mac Miller, and you look like you're like <laughs> so young and like the energy of it, like yeah, it's 2012. Like why do you, what was what was it about hip hop that made you really feel like this is the path you want to go? I, it just touched me when I was young, like five or six, like MC Light, Poor Georgie video. Like, mm. that's what made mm. me want to be a rapper, to see a woman do it. But, man, hip-hop was like, I don't, I can't remember, like, my first record that I heard, a video I saw, but I just remember, like, I always had to be in front of the TV watching hip-hop videos or, 
you know, my cousin had a, a tracker back in the day, and when I would ride with him, he was all, it was like, it was just cool, like, to me, like, it was just this coolness about it, and the storytelling and the, the playing with words, like, I was just drawn to it, and I was like, yo, I've got to do this, mm -hmm. like, I love music so much, and I couldn't sing, so it's like, I can't sing, so I gotta rap. Like that's right. what it's gotta be. Like that's the only option. I, I'm gonna be able to do it. Um, and I've I've just always been a creative person. Like I like to draw. You know, my mom always said I was creative. Like just do arts and crafts. We used to have those books, and I'm just, you know, so creativity was all part of me. And um, got into poetry and just hip hop, and it's just like, man, I gotta do hip hop. Like it's it's in me. Like. Right. And was connecting with Knife the turning point that made it real? Yeah, like, yeah. I'm from a small country town, and in North Carolina it goes God, uh, NASCAR, and basketball and football. <laughs> right. It's not <laughs> like a lot of culture where I am. It's not a lot of people in the arts. Like, you don't know people that made a success. So growing up it was never a thing where I thought I could really, it was it was attainable. Like, I could, I could see myself having a career. So I played basketball. Like I thought that was what I was gonna do. I was mm -hmm. gonna go to the NBA at five three. Like I so, don't you know. was too short. Yeah, I was short. <laughs> right. Yeah, I was short. But you know, I was good. Got a little jump shot, a little handle. I got a little bit. It's, I mean, it's gone a little bit now too, though. But back then, I had it. But um, you know, so you know, I played basketball and I got to college and I just got around the right people. And uh, my best friend, like he knew how much like inside I wanted to be a rapper. So we were in the studio one day. He was like. Hey man, why don't you stop being a punk? Like straight up, like stop being a punk. Stop being scared. Nobody here gonna judge you. We just having fun and get in the booth because I know you be writing rhymes. So I wrote these these two songs. One was called The Life. I can't remember the other one. But Ninth, uh, he came by and he heard him. It was like I was the only girl and twenty dudes. Mm. And when he came, like I I sat in a corner, like I tried to hide because I was so scared. Like I thought he was gonna play me. Um, I thought my song wasn't that good. But uh, he was he he pointed at every out of everybody pointed at me. He was like, "That's your star." Hmm. And I go back and listen to that song. I don't know what he heard. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, "Man, I can't even bear to listen to it." But he heard something, and it was just like gasoline on like a, a little match, and it just like, whew. like, cause it's Ninth Wonder and his little brother, and like to me, they're the biggest thing that came from North Carolina. If they can come from North Carolina, where you know we have a lot of rappers, Petey yeah. Pablo, right. Black Sheep. That's pretty much it. So, like, to have him, and he just coming off working with my favorite rapper, Jay-Z, like, it's just oh, like, the dread, right? yeah. yeah, threat, like, it's like, okay, let's do it. Like, what were those early sessions like, and what do you think you learned the most from him in those, in those early man, part of your career? Work ethic and cadence. Like, cadence and work ethic was the biggest thing. Like, I had the word, I always had the word play, but it was finding the right rhythm and cadence where people could say along to it. And he, you know, I used to stay in the studio and just, he just dropped gems because he's naturally a teacher. He'd be like, you know, like music is like, you get, you got to find a way to be lyrical, but you got to say it so people can say it with you. It's like your ABC. Like when you say your ABCs, you say it in a rhythm. When you give somebody your phone number, you say it in a rhythm. Like, you don't just bounce all over the places. Some, 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 some. It's a rhythm. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay. So he, at first he gave me like five albums he was like, I want you to go home and, and listen to these albums. He's like, I know you heard them, but I want you to listen to how they're saying the words and not what they're saying. Mm -hmm. And one of the albums was Black Album, which was my favorite album. So that's the one I study the most because I'm a J fan. And so I would play it every day and just listen to where he breathed that, where he let the beat breathe, you know, the inflections on his words. Mm -hmm. And I memorize and I'd be in the shower and I wouldn't finish my shower, I'd take long showers. I would rap every song from beginning to end because I had it that memorized. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't have it like that anymore. Like it's mm -hmm. gone. But um, and that was my homework just to get my cadence right. Um, so you know, it took it took a, a while to really really perfect. Like I would get in the booth and sometimes I get it, and sometimes I revert back to my old ways. Um, but knife is real patient, like super patient. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and he used to just have exercises like. He had a studio when he was teaching at Central. And, you know, he had his artists in there, but a lot of the students would come hang out too. So they could be like 15 students in there that rap and 15 mm -hmm. artists. And it's like Knife got this one beat. He like, everybody want to get on the beat. Like it's Knife mm -hmm. Wonder. So he's <laughs> the like, beat is hot. this is what we going to do. You know, everybody go write a verse and we going to come in here. Everybody going to record their verse one by one. 
and whoever got the best verses, that's who's going to be on the song. So it's like, that's how, it was always competition yeah. like that mm. all the time. So everybody like in there. Wu-Tang, Wu-Tang back in the yeah. day. Yeah, <laughs> everybody in there coming, mumbling, like they don't want you to hear what they got to say. And it's one by one going in the booth. And it, there's one joint that's it's on the net. It's called B-Ball Tryouts. Everybody made the song. Mm, wow. So it's it's just a long song with all these verses and his students. Um, and, you know, that's just how he used to keep us motivated and keep the competition up, but also to sharpen our swords because still sharp and still. So, you know, there were MCs that were way better than me at the time, but being able to get to compete with them, yeah. you get better right, like yeah. that. He did the same thing with producers. Like, there would be times we'd be in Bright Lady and just in the production team, the Soul Council, like, they have – days where it's like yo everybody get a rapper you got 30 minutes or an hour you make the beat write the verse go record the song mm-hmm. and you know we used to have those competitions all right. the time like yeah. that's what the studio vibe was and the energy is just always crazy right. so that's that's how we got the close and that's how everybody's chemistry chemistry got good and that's how we all got better together mm. so that was all knife like it's yeah it's just remember the first song you did where you felt like you impressed them that he was there. <laughs> <laughs> um, pr- I would probably say the very first one was probably the interludes that I did for Dream Merchant. And that was probably the first time a lot of people like really got to know me. Mm. Um, and it was crazy. I didn't say my name on him, so people didn't know <clears throat> who I was or how to find me. But he came in one day. He was working on Dream Merchant. He said, it's, he called me. He's like, I got an idea. I'm going to take these old uh, minstrel show s- samples and I'm going to reflip them. And I want you to just come in and spit random verses. Just go through your book and spit random verses. And I would spit verses. He, I'd be recording and he'd be like, he'd stop. He'd be like, man, where'd that verse come from? Like, why you ain't put that on such and such? I'd be like, man, I don't know. Like, I just got these verses. I don't, sometimes I don't be thinking they're good. And, you know, they hate that about me because, you know, I'll write a verse and in my mind I'll be like, they ain't good enough. And they'll be like, so now they make sure they be like, you cannot delete anything in your phone you can't mm. throw away no rhymes oh, wow. so you, even to this day you right you're so, you're so hard a, on yourself yeah, yeah like if it was me like it take me forever to put out a project because i'm always trying like nah that could be better and mm. they'd be like they gotta veto it like he just gotta put his stamp down and be like rap just go right. just go away it's fine like it's I'm good like, everybody be like they just look at me in unison like it'd be five producing they'd be like <laughs> no it's no go just stop it and so you know that's how that yeah, goes. That's how it goes. I want to go back a little bit to where you come from. You know, you know, like you mentioned, North Carolina, small town. I remember on the record, the cards, you kind of like talked about how you didn't get that much love. You know, you was getting right. love from BET and MTV, mm-hmm. and you know, even the people up here in New York. But back home, it wasn't like that. You know, right. is, is it still like that for a lot? You said for a lot of younger artists as yeah. well. Yeah, it's like that, and it's crazy. It was, it's like that for little brother. You know, you have to go out before and before you can come back in. Like you got to get notoriety from everybody else and love from everybody else before you get at home mm. like you know our radio stations don't play our artists um you know it, it's got to take like jay j cole being on star is born mm. for them to play j cole like that's what it took he had to get and I, you know i just think you got to go back and support your own like mm. north carolina is crazy talented like people sleep like there's so crazy talent from there um, so yeah, like it's it's still like that. Like wow. you know, it was it was always a struggle to get love and and just to, to get our music out to our home hometown. Right. Like so. But has like J Cole made it better? I guess <laughs> more so or. Um. Not really. Nah, they play J Cole because you know he is who he is now. Right. Like it's cool to play J Cole. Like. Mm. It's cool to play J. Cole because everybody knows J. Cole, but some new artists, like, ain't not going to take that risk. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's real sheep. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you got you to gotta be on a certain level. It's like, oh, okay, it's cool now. I'll play you now. It's right. cool. Oh, you with Rock Nation now? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> now you get these emails. Come by the station. Come by. Like, you didn't ask me to come by the station <laughs> last year. Right. Like, and that's and what I, I mean. To be right. <laughs> that's what I mean. Like, that's what having that rock nation logo mm-hmm. means like that's what that does like it yeah. solidifies it like it gives it a cool so right. it's just that's what but it so is so the community is still your foundation though because you know you talk about you know you your council barbershops and people yeah, you talk to like, and so much of it still now that's, that's where is your it's foundation at, right. so how so how do you still deal with that now as you're, as you're growing right you're growing yeah. and evolving but you're still very much rooted in that yeah, community yeah I can't, I can't leave that community like that's that's my foundation 
you know, somebody told me, like, you know, you, you could try to go after the millions of same group of people like everybody else. So you can go for this strong 200,000 fan base that's going to be with you for the rest of mm-hmm. your life where you can always do you like that. Like De La Soul has. Like right. De La Soul can come back and put an album out and get, what was their Kickstarter, 750,000 or something crazy? Yeah. 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 So, you know, that's what I stick with. Like, that, it's, it's all about the people. Like, I don't, I don't think people understand how much power they have, and I recognize that. And I can't leave that. Like I wouldn't be here without the people, so I mm. can't ignore them. Like you gotta, you gotta show and respect that and love right. that. So definitely show love to the the barber shops and you know, I always we still have ciphers at NC State. Like I'll drop into sometimes, right. you know, just to be at the level with the kids because I used to be in their position. So. So you, you would, so you with your, I'm sorry. I was just gonna say with your art, you, you're saying in that sense you're uncompromising and like. In terms of like you're not chasing hits, no, per se. no, like no, people not think Rock Nation. Now you're about to take things to the next level. So, yeah. how do you take things to the next level and still stay cool to your mm-hmm. core and feed that base? Yeah. I think there's a way that you do it, like through the music, you know, and the beats. Like there's a lane, but you can make your your songs bigger. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't have to change my sound, but you know, I could change my cadence for it's a little bit easier to follow. Like you'll get somebody on a hook, but I can I can keep the core of me because you know. You could follow a trend, but it's just gonna be another one that comes out. You know, I don't want to be a one or two year artist. Like I wanna, I wanna have a career. Like I right. wanna have a twenty year span. And everybody I know that's still around for twenty years, like they came in and they they had their own style and they kept that style. Cause you know you can't do anybody else's style better than they could do it. Right. Like I can't, I can't be sh- uh, sh- uh, Ray Sherman and them mm. I'm, I'm pronouncing their name wrong <laughs> right. no, Ray, I can't Shrum- do, Ray Sherman yeah like <laughs> um, like so it's just like I gotta do rap and nobody can do rap like like me so you know that's what it's all about like creating your own lane like there's so many paths you can do and there's room for it all and so you know I that's my brand and I know if I stick to that then, then that's what it is do you feel like lyricism is undervalued because I remember one line you said one time <laughs> about how the real rappers are selling the selling records like Future sold 100 yep. but Kendrick's selling 100 mil right right. like right. why was that important just to emphasize that right because people like people nowadays they're more in love with fame and money than the music you know are you a fan of the music or are you in love with the fame and you know Fame will solidify artists as being good now. Like, mm-hmm. oh, they got to be dope because I see them everywhere. But that's not the case. Like, just because you see them everywhere don't mean their music is, like, not to, you know, knock anybody. Cause, right. you know, I respect everybody's thing. But, you know, so that you, you can be rich and have great music but without having fame. So it's kind of like, what are you a fan of? And Kendrick and Cole, like, they not on the radio. Like, you might hear Future everywhere but they outselling them like crazy mm. so you know that's just what that line is like i don't have to be in your face i don't have to be on the radio you know because i have this core strong fan base who likes my music like i could still outsell you because i have great albums right so you know you might make music for a friday saturday i make music for monday tuesday wednesday thursday <laughs> <laughs> you know because people they, they don't live in the club like we got this life to deal with. Right. We got Trump in office. We about to have some life to deal with. So let's talk that's about that. Yeah, why you, why you this Melania, man? <laughs> <laughs> you right. You right. I saw some people that like that. You right. But I mean, on honestly, like it's a double standard. Like people went at Michelle for showing her arms. Like let o- let Obama have been running a campaign and those pictures have been Michelle. Like mm. even being in office, like that wouldn't have been cool. Like, they would have went at her neck. So I was just like, yo, that's crazy. Like, it's okay for this person to do it, but it's not okay for this person. And two, like, you're the president and first lady of the United States. Like, I feel like responsibility comes with that, you know? Mm -hmm. And and just what you're putting out there, especially to to girls, you Mm -hmm. know? Like, I I know everybody has a past, but you can't be president with a criminal history. Mm -hmm. So... You know, why you get to be first lady, you know, with that. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with you. She's a beautiful woman, beautiful yeah. body. But, you know, How I just porn think. porn star become the floaters? <laughs> I'm just saying, man. Like, that, just, the, just how did oh, president, for President-elect Trump become right. president-elect? Like, I'm surprised, but I'm not surprised at mm. the same time. Because I grew up in the South, and I, I know 
how far we are. I just caught, I just got called nigga last year, mm. you know. So I just know where we are, and I don't think a lot of people realize that we haven't come that far. Mm, like yeah. I, we had but, a rude awakening, right? Just, yeah. But just the fact that he made it that far to be the Republican nominee should have told you, like, yo, it's really something behind this, like. You know, we got to go out and vote. Like, we can't afford to write in because we're mad that Bernie didn't make it. Like, mm -hmm. you might not like Hillary, but I'm sure you'd rather prefer her than Trump. Like, well, she, for whatever she's reason. she's more experienced than Right, qualified, like, yeah. you know, she's done a lot of great things. Like, I got a lot of love and respect for Hillary, so, you know. And but you, and you stood up, is. too, when the misogyny stuff came out. You wrote a letter in Billboard or something? Yeah. You, had, you had wrote an editorial for Billboard. About the grabbing of the pussy. Like... <laughs> <laughs> It's like, come on, like, and a lot of white women voted for him, like, really? This mm. is, and that just shows, like, still, like, the sexism. Like, I, I know a lot of women's, like, I never vote for a woman. Like, right. that, that is Choosing a race over me. gender. In a yeah, sense, right? like, yeah. it's, man, I don't even, I don't even know. But you hit it head on by making this record fire. So like yeah. we all seem shell shocked, and then a couple of days later you put this record out. So did yeah. you did you record that after seeing the results? So you kind of already had um, that a concept or idea. Like how, what made you hit the topic kind of head on? The first verse of fire, and then the last verse where it switched up were the new verses. Um, that one verse in the middle, I did that. I did that like a year ago. Mm -hmm. um, just came from everything with Black Lives Matter. It was right after Freddie the Freddie Gray thing mm -hmm. where they had the riot. And that's, you know, um, we're going we gonna to burn this bitch. That's where all that came from. Right, yeah. um, mothers in the street fighting with their babies because, you know, they had that one lady when pulled her son out to right. protest. Um, so I, I did that song about, you know, about a year ago. But then you know, I, I wanted to, to bring it to date, you mm. know, and add so something to it. The mask came off tonight. Don't yeah, matter who boy, in the big house. We still going to march and fight. We still going to march and fight. Like, mm. the mask came off. Like, a lot of, like, low-key people that you wouldn't think were, were racist or feel some kind of race, like they show their, their colors, and it's like, you know, all right, they take them, they take the mask off, now you see them in plain face, how they really feel about us. But you know, it's it's still up to us, and we still have the power, like we gotta continue to keep going, and you know, we can have our moment to feel, but you know, we just gotta turn the steam up now, and everybody gotta find a way to do their part, right. you know, um, and especially artists, you know, just to continue to, to like I said, bring that balance, you know? Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. A lot of artists hadn't really spoken about it and made yeah. songs, and you were at the forefront of that. Yeah, like, It was just I in you to. that you felt like you had yeah, to? Yeah, I had to. I had to. Like, you know, we had the song. Knife, Knife was like, man, we got to put this out tomorrow. Like, we got to. Like, people need this right now. Yeah. You know, we need something to uplift us because this is, this is crazy. So he was just like, man, let's do it. Let's just, we, we going to give it to the people. I know growing up, music used to make me feel better. Right. Like, so. One of the artists that you grew up listening to was Lauren Hill. You talk about her a lot throughout yes. your Have you met her yet? I met her uh, twice. Oh. But um, they both were very, very brief. Oh, like, okay. I, I want to really sit down and like have a conversation and just get all the advice I can. And <laughs> but um, the first time I met her, I did Black Girls Rock like two years ago. Mm. Um, and it was crazy. Like, uh, it was Lauren, MC Light. Jean Grey um, and a couple more mm. but MC Light was the reason you know that I wanted right. to become a rapper and then Lauren Hill's probably my my biggest influence next to Jay-Z so to be on a show with both of them so after the show like you know Lauren's in the hall and it's like a crowd of people like mm. everybody want to talk and take pictures Right. and um, they let me go first though like <laughs> I was like yeah I appreciate it so you know I, I try to keep it quick because I know everybody else wanted to you know have their right. time but you know I just told her like I appreciate how much she was inspiration I, I I asked for advice because I was like, I don't know if I'm going to ever get this moment again. Right. Um, and she gave me, like, some of the greatest advice I had. You know, she was like, um, you know, people give me, I get a, a lot of the same advice. Like, I always appreciate it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, being on the ninth and, you know, he always dropping gems. Like, she gave me something that I could really apply that I hadn't heard before. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she was like, you know, touch and be a part of every aspect of your show. So, you know, you have a great show, a showmanship. So I appreciated that. And she was like, see, knowledge, knowledge, mm. you know. So it's just like, okay, like, you know, and I, I put that in the music. like. So does that you know? mean you're late to every show now that you do? 
Oh, come on. No. <laughs> well, low blow. I'm not speaking on that, man. No, you're not even getting Just make sure you're on time, right? Yeah. No, I'm, I play sports, man. I play sports. And I, you know if you were on time, that activity bus was leaving that <laughs> ass. So I'm on time. Like, I was, I felt bad for being 15 minutes late today. Like, I was like, yo, like, this ain't me. I'm usually a little early. Um, but no, like, I ain't trying to, I ain't trying well, to How get do you keep the pen inspired, though? How do you keep, like, with all this new family? Found attention and a lot of more demands career wise how do you mm -hmm. still lock in and where does the inspiration come from with, with man the i try to grab it from everywhere like um you know artists other artists inspire me like i'm, I'm still listening to pimple butterfly and untitled and and anderson like they always inspire me um i still bring back old classics reasonable doubt so reasonable doubt yeah. the score are your favorites right yeah yeah uh -huh. without a doubt um but movies too, like I'm a big movie head. Mm. So like, they, I can't go through life or a day without figuring out how can I can incorporate whatever happened or whatever I saw in a movie into a rhyme. Mm. Like, it just doesn't happen. So I go to the movies and I sit and watch movies and I take my phone, I'll be like, line. You know, <laughs> like I'm making notes. Line, I, I'm gonna use that, line. Um, and sometimes, like, I just ride in the car and I just freestyle on my phone. And within the freestyle, like, I'm not a great freestyler, but sometimes I hit a zone. And I, in, in that freestyle, a, a dope two or three lines Somebody will come there. out. Yeah, well, some. Lines, like, so. Lines. <laughs> Yeah, like bar, give me that. So you know, I just, I just keep a note, or you know, just conversations. I, I like to talk with people, um, and even just ha listen to people tell me their stories, and that always inspires a concept for a song. Mm -hmm. So I draw inspiration just from life, like everything. You know, like a song about nothing is just like that's a great that's record, a, man. Thank you. Like that's just everyday. I was like, people can relate to this. this is some everyday stuff, like right. so. Speaking of relate, you also talk about relationships, like records like Take It Slow, Drew Him, Drew With Him. Like, yeah. what, what, Wait, where are we going with this? Where are we going, <laughs> <laughs> going Elliot? I thought you were married, Elliot. <laughs> where are we going, man? Uh, I'm just curious how you approach nah. those type of songs, like in terms of nah. uh, the um, opposite sex, being a female out here, the yeah, man, yeah, yeah. a lot of suitors and I shit. I love men. They're Y'all are great. <laughs> um, no, nah. well, we hear about we also hear we yeah. also hear a lot about men talk about relationships and, yeah. and their music and all the time. It's different a lot of times with women, you know, may not get that perspective, especially in hip hop. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I definitely want to tell it from a female perspective, um, and you know, just speak on it in a way that you normally don't hear people speaking on it. You know, um, even sometimes like like I like I could be like, yeah, I know I'm a lot. Like I I know we extra, <laughs> we have attitudes sometimes. Like I want to touch it from all aspects. Like right. I don't always want to bash a man. It's like, yo, I know I got my own faults too as a woman. Like I'm aware. Like we all imperfect. So I try to touch on everything, yeah. but I definitely grab from like past relationships mm. that you know were great and some that were not so great. Like, <laughs> um, you know. Uh, and you know other people's relationships because you know we sit around we have girl talk mm -hmm. so you know that that turns into a song without telling too much of people's business you know <laughs> um, <laughs> you know so um that's just where I, I pull from from that but i try to make sure i make it well rounded because i have a lot of men fan fans yeah and i don't want i want them to be able to listen to it too without feeling like they're being bashed mm -hmm. you know what i mean so you know i just try to always approach it from both sides like I'll tell the guy's perspective and I'll tell the girl's perspective on mm -hmm. how we feel so and flip that know. fuck em girl dress to oh, Lawrence up in there yeah. like, I'm with him that was kinda hot that was kinda dope yeah man um, Knight came up with that idea <laughs> man um, my home girl shout out to Vanessa she was in town and we always just sitting there talking about relationships and um, I had did the through with him uh, joint and then we was just like they Vanessa and I want to say it was Vanessa and somebody else but they was on the couch and they just started saying man fuck a girl fuck fuck a girl and Knife just paused he was like yo wait a minute He and he just went and made the beat we was like oh and wow. that's how that came like, the Martin audio yeah, Martin Lawrence yeah audio. he was like oh wait a minute so Vanessa came up with that that idea actually for fuck em. Wow, That's crazy. Mm -hmm. you st I wanted to know: are you still listening to people with opinions? Because you said they don't support you on iTunes. You said that right. on the record, believe me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real. Like the people that be like, "Oh, you ought to do that." You ain't buy my record though. Like, get out of here. Stop it. <laughs> like you don't, you don't know. You don't even listen to the music. Stop. Um, nah, I don't. 
Like I'm in such a great space now. Like I used to, I used to be the artist that I read every t- every comments comment, and, stuff, right? and no matter how good comment, how many good comments you get, it always be the two bad ones you be like stuck on. And <laughs> like, do I really do that? Like you know what I'm saying? And just be eating with you. But right. I, I got to a point where you know, like man, whatever you think is whatever. Like yeah. I'm gonna focus on the people that like it. Like that's what I'm gonna focus on. If you don't like it, go listen to what you do like. Mm. And you know, that's what I learned. Like we talk we talk about people we don't like way too much. Like we give them way too much energy. Mm-hmm. You know, like I remember people used to, you know, go in on Iggy like Okay, if Iggy ain't for you, then go find yeah. something that you like and talk about that. Right. You know they what just saying? kept going with it. Keep yeah, going, it's keep like going, you just yeah. giving it more publicity. You know, find something you do like. Like Iggy got her fans that love her, and if you're not one of the fans that love her, then find somebody you love and go talk about them. Um, and that was one thing Kendrick told me after I did Complexion. Uh, we sent the verse back, and um, he sent knife a text. He was like, "Yo, she killed that." He was like, "Man, people always talk about who they don't like, but this is who I like." And, you know, just to make it known, she's the only uh, feature on the album with a verse. So it's just like, man, you right. Like, we got to show way more love to the people that we do like. Like, right. why are we putting energy and stuff yeah, we don't? Yeah, we just keep that's going on and on about the negative. Right, and that's about like, the what does that do? Like, so, yeah, I don't fuck opinions. <laughs> I just realized that you really <laughs> are the only one with the verse on yeah wow that's yeah, crazy that's, that's crazy man but how do you do with it like because we always oh, say like how, that we don't have enough women in this industry how tough yeah. this business is like how do you meant how were you mentally strong and able to deal with this because it is it does get mm-hmm. real stressful it is a tough uh, business i think one thing that helped like for one me growing up as a tomboy like um <laughs> for real like um i was the youngest girl grandchild in my family for a minute until my uncle came and had a granddaughter and she stole my thunder but um <laughs> all my cousins around my age were boys so like i've all I've, that's how i was a tomboy i was always around the boys always playing with the boys so you know same with the studio mm. um before you know we got a singer with heather it's just me and her but it's just a bunch of guys but you know i'm just comfortable with guys and i, I never approach it as me just being a female in the business like I know I'm a female, but I always approach it as no, I'm a I'm an MC. Like I just want to be a great rapper, and that was always it for me. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't want to put my box box myself in as a female rapper, and I think that's that's helped my approach. Like, you know, mm-hmm. just to focus on the music first. Right. It's just all about the music, and I, I just want to be one of the greatest. So that's what I put all my energy into. You know, and it it was tough, like because that's how I looked at it, but everybody else looked at me as a female rapper and mm. they put me in this box and you know where you know I do a song and it's like oh you, when you gonna come at Nikki or when you gonna come yeah, at that I was like yo the, what do you mean like why like why I gotta do that why right. I gotta come at Nikki like I'm I'm competing with everybody you know I like competition competition can be healthy like you can compete with people and still respect them for yep, what they right. do yep. and that's how I always approach it like yeah I'm competing but I respect you as an artist mm-hmm. like I'm a, I'm a fan of music first. Right. So, you know, Crick, Kendrick, like, all these people I'm fans of. Like, I love their music. Anderson, Chance the Rapper, Common. Like, so, you know, that's how I've always approached it. Like, you know, I don't get caught up in that craziness. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just... It's just about the music for me. Right. And growing yeah. up, you mentioned you were a tomboy. You said that uh, a lot of the guys knew who you were because of your dad. They knew your dad's <laughs> name. <laughs> yeah, because where I'm from is Snow Hill is super small. Like, the population is... 2000 maybe oh, wow. like <clears throat> my graduating class was probably like 150 people so wow. it's a really small Damn. town um and you know i have a big family my my mom is one of 13 my dad is one of nine oh, wow so <clears throat> my dad is, is a real likable person mom too so everybody knows him my dad plays sports mm. so um <clears throat> every you know just going through school like athletic director coaches oh you're you're roy's daughter i know you can ball right you know they don't call me by my first name evans come here evans (laughs) evans so you know that's what it was um so yeah just growing up in a small town gotcha Gotcha. (laughs) oh you're on the way to big stages and big places man tell you that much man Thanks. One thing on the album, I want to touch on you. You touched on the whole Bill Cosby controversy. You, you, yeah. you said Bill might be in question, but he cliffed and saved us all. Yeah. Like, why was it important to like big up the, the importance of the Cosby Show? I guess to like, our community. Man, it, because it, it, the Cosby Show just did so much for us, you know, and for them to take that off the air, you know, off accusations that he hadn't even been to court for, 
you know, like the, the dude from Seventh Heaven, like it's proven right. that, you know, he's a molester and they still run Seventh Heaven. So mm. like, is it because he's black? You know, mm. that is just like, you know, let me get this off. So it's just like, yo, we, things moving a little bit too fast. Like Felicia Rashad, like uh, <clears throat> Theo, like all, all these characters, like that needs to be shown. Kids need to be able to see this different yeah. world. Like don't pull it off. And it's just accusations. Nobody knows what happens. Mm -hmm. Like the media is going to put whatever the media is going to put mm -hmm. out in the forefront. Like they're going to write the narrative, but nobody knows what happened. And that's just where I am with it. And it's just like I. Some of my biggest influences are Cicely Tyson and Felicia Rashad. And when Felicia Rashad came out, she was just like, you know, I still have his back. That mm -hmm. says something to me because I, I think she knows him better than anybody else. But I also think as a woman, you know, just just how classy she is, how mm -hmm. much pride she is. Like, she's not just going to take his back for no reason just because he, he's Bill Cosby. Like, right. there's a reason behind it. And that says something to me. And it's just like, yo, let's just let's just chill out and look at the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Like, what's really going on? Mm -hmm. Like, it, it kind of feels like, you know, people say it's because he was about to buy a network and really do some positive things. So. It's like maybe we see what happened with Birth of a Nation. Right. You know, it's like people say, like, he's been in a million movies, and now you want to bring this up? Why? Because of this powerful Nat Turner movie? Mm -hmm. So it's just like, you know, we really got to sometimes step back and just see, like, what's happening. Like, gotcha. Because it's always a chess game. So that's like, I don't never like to jump to conclusions. So yeah. I'm going to still what watch. You want to touch on right, it. Right. Like, yeah. I'm going to still watch the Cosby show. Like, I don't know what happened, you know, so. You know, I'm not picking a side, and I'm not dismissing anybody's feelings. Also, but, just right. the show's mm -hmm. importance in general. You're saying, <clears throat> yeah. can you separate the two in a sense, right? Because the show right. itself it's, is it's a an character, and it, it was important to our the community. Right, like Heathcliff was, he was the man, you know what I'm saying? Right. And he represented a lot of us, and he inspired so many people. So, like, I'm not letting that go. Like, nah. But that's really with the inspiration with the crown in general. Like, what do you mean yeah. when you specifically say, like, you didn't leave the house without your crown? Like, what are you really saying to, to people yeah. in, in terms of that inspiration? Man, you know, just just to be confident and to be aware, you know, and, and I just just to pull from everywhere, you know, it's, it's, it's part as we go through life, like what we learn from, from God, whoever that is, and just our experiences it's about how we make people feel rather than, you know, who's the best or who's sitting on the throne because I think we all exist in our own kingdom and we are king and queen of our mm -hmm. own kingdom. Like, they, that never has to be one. Like, everybody has a crown and everybody's king and queen of something. You know, everybody has their own talent and you're great at it. So that's what it is. Like, own your light, find that thing that makes you special, mm -hmm. you know, and be proud of that and walk in that light. So that's what it is, you know, just put on your crown. Everybody crown different, but every everybody's crown is priceless. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody crown got jewels in it. They might be different jewels, different colors, rubies, emeralds, whatever. But, you know, <laughs> find what makes you special. And, you know, that's what it's about. How does that set up the album in your judgment? Like, how does it? So this is amazing. We're saying, like, this feels like an album, right? You know what I was saying? It feels like an album already. Oh, yeah, it's great. Yes. He's calling it an EP. You got more than ten songs. You're sneaking songs in there. <laughs> right. yeah. We're gonna rock out with this. But how did how did you, in your mindset of what you're putting together? How does this then set up the album? And this, I, and do you feel mm -hmm. pressure with this idea of the big debut, the big album, the yeah. big stage? Nah, I'm, I'm I'm so proud of what we did. Like I don't have no pressure. I'm just excited for people to hear it. But um, oh, in terms of the album, so you feel like you're done with the album? Yeah, the album's done. Mm -hmm. It's done. I don't know when it's coming out, but um, you know, we working out some things on the other end. Uh, but it's done um, <clears throat> for the most part. You know, being that you know we still waiting for business things to figure it out. We might you know add some things. I never stop recording. Like yeah. my process is, I'm gonna keep recording, try to make something better, and knock something off until like they tell me like you we can't turn it. You right. gotta turn it in. Like it's over. Um, but it's got a great foundation. <clears throat> great foundation. Mm -hmm. But um, I think the progression, like Crown, represents where I am now in the space I am now mm -hmm. you know everything I've been through to get to this point so this is my space now like I got my crown like I'm confident I can hold my head like right. I'm in a good space the album kind of represents like the journey of finding of, of getting that crown mm -hmm. like 
all of my life experiences that made me who I am. So it's kind of like the backstory right. type thing. That's dope. Well, one thing I got to give you props for is the rollout because you don't see too many rollouts uh-huh. these days with crowns. So like when I saw like there was the countdown clock and how you were given <laughs> a lot of these figures, you know, imaginary crowns or whatever. But mm-hmm. it was really good rollout, like how you put it Thank all together. You, I the just, marketing comes together, all those ideas, right, not I, just the music, I, right? Yeah. yeah, I just got that idea one day, like being independent like before Rock Nation came like you gotta wear all kind of hats like you gotta do a lot of different things you gotta be artists but you also gotta do your own marketing right. you gotta do this so you know ninth and my team we get together we do the music and it's like how are we gonna do it so this is that's just naturally I'm very involved in all aspects of that cause I've always we've always had to do it so you know I did the, the projects I'm like alright how we gonna how we gonna do it and um you know, I was just like, I was trying to figure out like a cover for it. Mm. And I was looking up crowns and it's like, man, let me play with it. And um, I took a crown, I, I just put it on a picture, see what it looked like. I was like, yo, that might be a dope marketing um, project. Like, and it won't work for the cover, but what if we, you know, I made some phone calls to some music friends and just some friends in general and to promote it, like to cross promote with our mm-hmm. fan bases, yeah. like, you know, just have them. Like a Grant Hills and yeah, all that. Yeah, Grant Hills, buddies. Jabari Parker, like, <laughs> they are homies. I ghost write for the Grant Hills sometimes. You said he got, <laughs> I saw you say he got beats too, right? Yeah, Grant got beats. Grant he, Hill got beats. Man, he be, he be hiding on the low. He got some beats. But <laughs> yeah, that was the idea, and it just, it worked. Like That was dope. It worked. So it, and it's crazy, like, to see people now try to make their own crowns. Right. Like, I didn't see that come out. I was like, yo, that's crazy. So they get it's it. Working. They, they get, the market get, plan was you. It's working. <laughs> we get it, man. We, now we're in good standing with your fans now. They can stop attacking <laughs> us, man. Word. Man. Perhaps these here is just the beginning, man. Congrats on everybody. Thank Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank crown. You. Get that crown and then the get album the is coming soon. Y'all wear y'all crowns. Don't leave the house without it. Word <laughs> up. All right, thank you, Rhapsody. Thank Absolutely. Wrap right up, podcast. Here we out.